everybody. Thanks for joining us here today at the Muskingum County Library System. My name is Miss Jennifer from the Youth Services Department and today we are going to be doing some science. That's why I'm wearing my safety glasses. We're going to be doing some nurse, nursery run based science. These are STEAM activities or STEM activities if you will based off of some familiar nursery rhymes. The very first one we're going to do involves fire. So you definitely want to have to have grown-ups help for this. And I have a couple of candles here on a couple of glass plates, just saucers like you would use for coffee cups. And we are going to do our experiment that goes along with the nursery rhyme, Jack be nimble, which goes like this. Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, Jack jump over the candlestick. Of course, I don't have candlesticks today. I just have these little tea light candles. We're going to go ahead and light both of them. And don't worry, we do have sprinklers and there is a sink on the other side of the room. And I do have a child proof lighter with me today too. A lighter just made for lighting candles. Now we'll give them a little bit of air. Oxygen helps the fire burn. So what do you think would happen if we cut off the oxygen? I think we should give it a try. First I want to bring these a little bit closer to the camera so you can see that they are in fact lit. Very carefully carry them over. Just little candles there, it's just little flames. Gotta move back over there very carefully. And you're gonna take a regular drinking glass and put it over one of our candles to cut off the oxygen. Then we'll see how long it burns without it. I do have a stopwatch with me today. So we will go ahead and do now. Now the other candles burning pretty good. These don't last very long, maybe about 20 minutes tops if we let it burn down all the way. Still going, we still have the flame. Oh, I nearly blew out the other one. I'll have to be careful there. And it's out at 19 seconds. I don't know if you can see that if you really zoom in with your your computer or your phone. So it doesn't take very long to extinguish a flame that way as well. We're going to go ahead and blow out our other candle. Actually no, let's go ahead and put it aside. We'll see how long it lasts. Let's put it carefully right over here. I'm going to set it on one of our chairs over here. Let's set it on the tablecloth. Maybe that's a smart place to put it. <laughs> okay. So our next experiment goes along with another familiar nursery rhyme called Hey Diddle Diddle. I know you know this one, which goes like this. Hey Diddle Diddle, the cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon. So we're going to use catapults to see if we can get the cow to jump over this moon right here. I know, it's a great moon, isn't it? Love tinfoil. I've got a couple of catapults here that we've made with popsicle sticks, or sometimes they're called tongue depressors or even wooden craft sticks. Catapults can also be called trebuchets, which is a little bit more along the style of this one that actually has a lever part that works there, a swinging arm on it. So this is a simple machine. And this one is made with popsicle sticks and some glue and a straw so that it is levered there. And then we just use, um, this is just a little condiment cup. You can find all of these on Pinterest. Um, we will be sharing a document under this video. And there we will also be putting these on the library Pinterest page, our, our Pinterest. So be sure to follow us and look for it on our Steam board. This one is just made of popsicle sticks and rubber bands and, of course, a plastic spoon. Very easy to make these. So I do have a cow here and my little cow is put on a ping pong ball. So let's see which one of these will help the cow get over the moon. These work with force. So we're going to put a little bit of force on our trebuchet one that has the little cup. So let's see. Give it a try. See if we can get the cow to go over the moon. Uh, maybe give it one more try. I know our moon's a little bit high too. 
just going to move the cat a little bit further away, see if that works. Oh, almost, almost. Got to retrieve my cow. He rolled away. She, I guess the cow is a she, isn't it? Can't be sliced if we're incorrect on what we call our animals. So let's give our catapult a try. These are a lot of fun to make too. So you're gonna put the cow in here. Now it's a catapult. And we're going to pull back that spoon and let her fly. Head on up, whoops. <laughs> She just goes a little bit too high. Let's try it one more time. Oh, she just wants to go straight up in the air. You can actually change your catapult. Sorry, retrieve my cow again. <laughs> By changing the position of the spoon, or if you use craft sticks or a little cup, um, and one of the things I saw they use of this from the milk jug. Here we go. Let's change the position of the spoon a little bit. Give it another try. Whoops. See if we can get that cow over this moon. Well, if the moon was straight up, the cow might head that way. <laughs> One more shot here. Almost, just short of the moon. Well, maybe if we put the moon down and not on top of our glass. Well, in theory, hey, but that's science, right? Sometimes it doesn't always work. <laughs> I'll try it one last time. Come on, cow. Don't you want to be an astronaut? Of course you do. Well, sometimes it doesn't always work. So let's put that one aside. Our last experiment here is actually gonna be a little bit of, okay, a lot of fun. And it's based on Humpty Dumpty. I'm sure you know this nursery rhyme. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. So I have six eggs, they are hard boiled, and I put them in different baggies full of different materials. This is playing a little bit with different kinds of materials and how well they would absorb the shot. We've got um, six different things here. And if you um, want to download the document that is included with this video or visit the pin, there is actually a little chart that you can download if you want to try this at home and follow along and see which of which of your Humpty Dumpties survives this fall the best. So we've got some pieces of cut up foam. You want to fill up the baggie about half to two thirds of the way. These are just regular sandwich bags with the zipper on them. Be less messy, trust me. <laughs> uh, we've got cotton balls. We have some very colorful feathers. Some shredded paper some dried black beans, and marbles. We're gonna see which of these will cushion Humpty Dumpty's fall. All right, so let's try the marbles first. And I do have a step stool because we wanna do this safely. Also, I'm kind of short, so it wouldn't be so much of a fall if I just dropped Humpty Dumpty from just my height. And we can stand up on the step stool and really let him go. All right, Humpty. Oh, yeah. All right, let's see who's up next. So now we have Humpty and the feathers. If you think that he's gonna survive the feathers, then please put that in the comments. All right, let's give him a draw. Hmm. We have Humpty in the beans. Nice bed of beans here. Let's give him a draw. We have Humpty in the cotton balls. Now cotton balls are pretty cushy, aren't they? Hmm. Make sure that they're underneath of him as much as possible. Maybe a little bit heavier than the cotton balls. 
And do make sure you seal up these baggies because even though they're hard boiled, you don't really want the mess of eggshells all over the place. Or in case you didn't get as hard boiled as you thought and they're soft boiled egg. All right, I'm gonna give them a drop. These cotton balls are surrounding them pretty well here and okay. Gooey Aunt Humpty Dumpty in the foam. This is just cut up pieces of foam like you would use for um, making a chair cushion or something like that. You could probably use memory foam if you have that at home too. Get a little bit of air out of here. Okay, foam is pretty darn cushy, right? Let's see though. It's cushy enough to help Humpty survive the fall. Uh, I heard a crack there. And finally, shredded paper. Shredded paper is great because you use it for packing material, right? If you order a package from Amazon, sometimes it comes in shredded paper or bubble wrap. Bubble wrap's another great material that I just didn't grab with me today. That might have really hurt them. All right, Humpty, here you go. Okay, so I'm gonna come down off my ladder. We're gonna take out each Humpty and see which one survives. Oh, golly, golly gosh, guys. Now that was a high of drop of about seven feet. Okay, so first up was Humpty and Marbles. Who thinks he survived? Oh, I don't know, guys. There's an awful lot of cracks on that poor Humpty Dumpty. I don't think marbles make the best material to absorb shock. Which is really what we're talking about with this experiment, is shock absorption and which materials be the best. Next up was Humpty and the feathers, right? Feathers are pretty cushy. They make great pillows. He's really hiding in there. Oh, oh, yeah, not so good. Not quite cushy enough. See all the cracks? Mm. Finally, oh, not finally, I guess. Nope, definitely not finally. Humpty and the beans. Let's see how Humpty and the beans fare. Oh, just one little, little tiny crack there. Pretty good, actually. He'd still be safe to eat. <laughs> I don't know, I might be having boiled egg for lunch. Humpty in the foam. Let's see how well that one did. Oh, oh, not so great, not so great at all. Yeah. And finally, Humpty in the shredded paper. I think we might be a little bit surprised by this one. Hmm, not too smashed up. But it seems out of all the materials that we tried, the beans actually cushioned Humpty Dumpty's fall best of all, probably because they actually spread out and take up space and push the air out to help absorb his fall. So he survived with just a little tiny crack, but you could put him in the refrigerator and he'd still be good to eat tomorrow. Refresh this morning. <laughs> So that's a little fun experiment you can do at home, and especially if you like hard boiled eggs. Now, I think this is kind of interesting. We'll just share a little science or history fact here to go along through science. The real Humpty Dumpty wasn't an egg at all, not even a person. It was actually a great big cannon. And during the Civil War in England, it was on a stone wall and was shot down by cannons from the other side and it fell down off of the wall and no one could retrieve it. So that's why all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. Now the real cannon is of course now back in all in one piece and on display in England. Thank you guys for joining us today. Please join us for our next video. Have a great day. This is Miss Carrie showing us how the catapult should work. So just keep trying, kids. This is Miss Carrie showing us how the catapult should work. 
So just keep trying, kids.